got back after the funeral. I was in my darkest time that I'd ever been in, and I, I questioned my faith. I questioned who I was in God. I, I questioned if God existed. I had made up my mind when I, when I was in depression. My kids were in depression. They didn't want to be here. I didn't want to be in Washington, being in that setting and not having any family, no friends, no one to talk to. About my situation, I felt alone. My, my husband could not understand what I was going through. He could not understand what I was feeling. He couldn't help me. His words were of no comfort. They were of no consolation for me. So I was drowning. I was drowning. I, I, I was, had made up my mind that I was no good to him. I was no good to my children. So I made up my mind that the best thing for for my family and the best thing, you know, for my kids and my husband was to you know, to set them free from me in, in my mind and to set myself free from the, the hurt, the pain. I could not I, I I felt like I couldn't live or breathe without Stevie Boy. Every day was pain. It was raw pain. I didn't want to live like that anymore. And I'd made my decision that it was my last night and I was gonna, I was, that was it. And my plan was to overdose on medication and not wake up. And I said, okay, I, I want my, I want my kids to have a, a, I want their last memories of me, you know, to at least, I'm gonna try to be in the room. I'm gonna try to be present as mommy in the room and I'm gonna, you know, try my best. Because I was like a mummy, I was numb. You know, and, and I said, I'm going to try my best to be a good mommy today. I sat and I played with them, with my husband in the in the living room. And that's when my daughter, she just randomly comes up to my husband and she sits on his lap and she starts playing with him and, and touching his face. And she's like, Daddy, Daddy, is it really true that God did tell you to bring us to Washington? Did God really tell you we needed to come to Washington? And my husband, you know, was so assertive and he was so confident in his answer. And he says, yes, yes, daddy, uh, God told me that we needed to come. God told me to come to Washington. And she was so satisfied and content with that answer. And she just got so happy. She's like, okay, daddy. And she just starts playing like, you know, like nothing. And I was just so angry at his answer. I was so mad that, you know, he had answered that yes, you know, it was God's will because I could not understand how God if there was a God, because I was in a time in my life in that season of darkness where I questioned my faith, if he even existed. And I said, well, if there is a God, then this can definitely, you know, not be his plan to be in, in to be in this, in this, such a dark place. I ran upstairs, I closed the door, I, I dropped to the ground. I told God, you know, I don't even know if you're listening. I don't know if you exist, but if you really do exist, then I need you to do something because nobody can do it for me. Nobody understands me. And I'm angry every day I wake up angry. And I remember that night when I was on the ground on the floor, he just came and he embraced me, he held me, he cuddled me. And I felt like you know that he was in the room with me. I remember I fell asleep, I knocked out and uh, it, there was so much peace in the room. I, I didn't need any of my medications. I didn't need any pain medication or my, my migraine medication. I didn't need anything. And I started my journey with him. And then I got a call from Bishop Romo asking me to speak at a conference that he was hosting. And how on earth could he call me, you know, if I'm not even qualified? I don't. I'm not a speaker, you know, and I prepared and I prepared and I was so nervous and as soon as I got up there and as soon as I got up on the pulpit, um, immediately this God's anointing and authority just falls all over me and God tells me, no, you're going to speak from the heart, you're going to speak, you're going to speak what I've done for you. And so I close my iPad and I literally start, you know, speaking my story. 
And that was the first time that I had ever spoke about my story, that I had been transparent to open up. And it was so liberating and it was just beautiful to be able just to be under so much anointing and to speak the truths that I'd been hiding, you know, about my journey, about my struggles, to be vulnerable, to be vulnerable in the hands of God, to be vulnerable in the presence of God and to speak to a bunch of strangers that I never met before and just let them into my personal walk to be a blessing to them. And that was the day that God said, women speak. And as I was flying back home, I remembered that it was just women speak, women speak, women speak. And that night I had a vision, I had a dream. I woke up speaking in other tongues. I woke up in the presence of God because the Lord showed me that I was on a platform and there was the masses of people. I mean, just, I, I, I don't even know if it was like, you know, over the hundreds of thousands of people of all, of all colors. And I was speaking to them. And it was just something so powerful that I woke up speaking on tongues and I told my husband, you know, women speak, women speak. And he's like, what? I would have just never thought that God could do what he has done with Women Speak. I mean, it's just, I just, it's a movement, you know? Women Speak is a movement. I mean, so many lives have been changed and have been transformed because I was bold enough to, to, 
stand up and say what I was going through. And in the process, this is what's so amazing, is that in the process, God was healing me by speaking what I was going through. Speaking about my vulnerabilities as a wife during those dark moments, speaking about my weaknesses during the time where I couldn't even get up and make breakfast for my kids because I was depressed. I had no strength to get out of bed, I had no energy. I didn't even want to exist, but I believed God. I believed God. I believed him. He was just, what he had done for me was too much for me to ignore it and put it away. I couldn't anymore. I had to surrender to the call. I had to surrender to the call. Here we are celebrating five years. <laughs> five years of struggles and challenges and victories so many victories i mean so many oppositions so many giants that we slayed during these five years all, all i can say is we're here you know <laughs> walking in victory it's so amazing <laughs>